Welcome to this video where I'm going to have a look in depth at one of the simulations that I completed during my FM18 experiment where I simulated the 2018 World Cup 100 times. If you haven't watched that video already, please go and check that out, it'll be in the description below. It was an insane thing to do, but I'm pretty pleased I did it because it's now got over 39,000 views at the time of recording this video. And it's had quite a bit of exposure. It's been shared around quite a lot on social media by the likes of Sport Bible. I think a few different news accounts, uh, football news accounts have done articles using it as well. I think ESPN in Brazil did something on it, which is really, really random, but pretty cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you in depth the 77th simulation, which was an incredible tournament. The final finished 6-4. We're going to watch that final in full. Well, not in full. I'll show the key highlights. We'll show all the goals and, and anything else dramatic in that game. Um, but I would quite like to do a few of these videos on separate World Cups. For those of you that are interested in looking in depth at some of these simulations, this was a popular choice commented on the first video that I did. So I might go back to some earlier ones, but I think I need to start with this insane 6-4 final. There was another 6-4 as well later on, so I might show that one as well. That was between Argentina and Poland. But this final is between Argentina and Colombia. But we are going to jump into the save file and have a look in depth at this World Cup. I mean, how did Peru finish fourth? That is an incredible achievement. But if there's any other particular World Cups you want me to, to look at, Stick them in the comment section below, the most popular ones I will do a video on. So we'll start off by looking at the group stages of this competition then, and just scroll down, have a look at maybe some of the matches in a little bit more detail. You can see Russia completely romped to Group A winners. They won all three of their games, they didn't concede a single goal, scoring six in the process. Saudi Arabia finished bottom with zero points, and then it was a, a toss-up between Uruguay and Egypt. Can't remember if it's done on head-to-head -head or goal difference at the World Cup. But as you can see, Uruguay did finish ahead of Egypt. Russia, really, really, really good stuff from them. Spain also went through winning all of their games, scoring 12 goals and not conceding a single goal. Morocco bottomed their group, but they did get a draw against Portugal. 2-2, really good result there. Iran actually managed to beat Morocco to get three points. Portugal sneaked through one point ahead of Iran. Uh, France comfortably went through. They didn't win every single game. Seven points. They did draw against Australia 1-1, who finished bottom of their group. Their only point was against the eventual winners of the group, France. Denmark, who, remember, won two World Cups during this experiment. Really impressive stuff from them, but they did get knocked out in this group. Peru went through instead and obviously went on to finish fourth. They beat Australia. They beat Denmark. Croatia did go through as well along with Argentina, seven points. Iceland did get a win against Nigeria, who finished bottom of their group. Brazil went through top of Group E, seven points. They did draw against Costa Rica, who also finished bottom. So we've got a few teams winning the group, but drawing against the bottom team in the group. It's really interesting. Switzerland snuck through against Serbia. Remember, Serbia managed to win a World Cup on this experiment as well. South Korea won all three of the... That is really impressive knocking Germany out in the group stage. Three points to Germany. It's a, it's a little bit of a tricky group. Mexico, very impressive, I think. A very impressive team. Sweden, bottom of this group, completely flopped. But on some of the experiment, some of the simulations, they did do quite well. South Korea, we haven't really seen do very well at all in, in this experiment. But in this particular simulation, comfortably went through. Um, managing to get 2-1 win against Germany, 4-1 win against Mexico, and a 3-1 win against Sweden. Germany only beat Sweden, and Mexico beat Sweden and Germany, as you can see there. England comfortably went through as well. They won all three of their games. Impressive to beat Belgium. Of course, the eventual winners of this experiment went in 22 World Cups. Uh, comfortable wins against Panama and Belgium. A little bit of an uncomfortable win against Tunisia, 3-2. Tunisia did actually beat Panama and Panama unfortunately lost all their games but remember they did finish fourth in one of the world cup simulations we might want to have a look at that one in more detail because panama did extremely well and lastly poland actually finished ahead of colombia the eventual finalists here colombia scored plenty of goals as you can see they beat um japan 4-2 and senegal 5-2 but they did lose 2-1 against poland so let's go through to the second round then where you can see Russia, the hosts knocked out Portugal. That's a really good win. Smolov's done particularly well in this experiment. I think he 
did finish top goal scorer a couple of times. Uruguay beat Spain 2 0, thanks to, oh no, 3 0, sorry, Cavani, Suarez, and Diego Roland with the goals. Isco actually missed a penalty. He's one of the top performing players on this experiment. You can see Spain certainly dominated in regards to statistics, but Uruguay comfortably went through. I keep saying the word comfortably, but there's a lot of comfortable wins here. Argentina beat France 1-0 thanks to Higuain. So that was a clash and a half in the second round and Argentina came out on top. Now you may have noticed that Messi really did underperform on a lot of these simulations and it is because he played central midfield for predominantly the majority of these simulations. And I think it's probably because of the fact Argentina have so much attacking talent they've got Aguero they've got Higuain they've got Dybala of course they've also got Icardi they've got other players like Lamella up there Di Maria um, Lanzini in real life playing for Argentina but not on this so to fit Messi into the system is a little bit tricky and they're actually playing 4-4-2 no they're not playing 4 they're playing 3-5-2 in fact because they're playing a the defence midfield a really interesting formation there let's just have a so this is the tactic Argentina use very attacking tactic they don't play wing backs they've just got a flat four in the middle and Messi playing central midfield which is why he hasn't appeared very heavily on those lists Peru really impressive win against Croatia in extra time Jefferson Farfan who's been around for years getting a 117th minute goal after Carrillo opened the scoring in the 113th minute Mexico what a win this is I said Mexico is a strong team they beat Brazil in extra time Brazil were the third highest winners of the World Cup during this these 100 simulations. Switzerland beat South Korea 1-0. So South Korea, after a very impressive group stage, knocked out by Switzerland. Seferovic with a late, well not a late winning goal, a 66th minute goal. And then this, what a, what a game this is between Colombia and England. It's 3-2 to England after Danny Welbeck puts them 3-2 up in the 88th minute. Danny Rose gets sent off presumably for bringing down a player because Falcao steps up and scores a penalty a minute later and then this is the winning goal in the 116th minute. What an insane game. Colombia don't care about defence. It's all about going forwards. They've got Baca, they've got Falcao, they've got James Rodriguez. Cuadrado plays at right back. That shows how attacking they are. Let's just skip through to the goal. This is the winning goal. Falcao crosses it in, headed back by Cuadrado and then poked home to send them through to the quarterfinals. Belgium beat Poland in the other second round match. Lukaku with two goals. Hazard just features so heavily during this experiment. He's insane. I mean, he's always been probably the best player on Football Manager for me because I, the number of times I've been ripped apart by Eden Hazard over the years since like FM11 is ridiculous. He's got 20 on dribbling. He's an incredible player and... I feel like he performs better on the game than in real life. Obviously, he's very good in real life, but he's more productive on the game. He gets more goals and assists on the game. And obviously, we saw that during this experiment. Moving on to the quarterfinals, and Peru, really impressive 3-0 win against the hosts, Russia, who missed a penalty through Zagoev. Farfan with another goal, as did Carrillo get a goal, and then a third from Carlos Askews. 3-2 win between Argentina and Uruguay. This is a really goal-heavy competition, isn't it? We've got some cracking games. Higuain got two goals in this one. Lamella actually got the winner in the 86th minute to send Argentina on their way to the semi-finals. They scored plenty of goals on their way to winning this World Cup. Most of them <laughs> in the final, really. That was the winning goal that sent them through. So that was a head-to-head -head between two, two South American sides. Of course, they took on Colombia in the final as well. Belgium beat Mexico 3-1 after extra time. Once again, Eden Hazard. Now, it's a bit controversial that Leon Bailey was involved for Belgium on this experiment. For whatever reason, Sports Interactive have put his uh, Belgian down as a second nationality. Now, he's obviously Jamaican. He's eligible for England through his grandfather, I think, who held, holds or held, I don't know if he's still alive, holds a, a British passport, so he can play for England. However, there's a question of him possibly playing for Belgium because he spent time in Belgium. He's only spent two years, though, so he should have spent longer to be eligible for them. If he marries a Belgian, though, I think he can play for Belgium. He, I think he actually wants to play for Germany, but he can't play for Germany for a few years. So I don't know why Sports Interactive put Leon Bailey down as Belgian. I don't know if that's been sorted out yet or if that still is the case. But anyway, in, this alternative par on the, in these alternative parallel universes... He ended up playing for Belgium, I think, in pretty much every save, in every simulation. And although he wasn't important in every single game, 
that w- may, may have had a bearing. If they didn't play him, though, they, they've got plenty of other players. Like, Mertens probably would have played. And he's an incredible pl- incredible player as well. So, just because Bailey played, it doesn't mean Belgium would have won less World Cups without him because they've obviously got some very good players to, to replace him. An incredible team. Um, but, yeah, that might have had a little bit of a swing towards Belgium. Who knows? Good win. 3-1 against Mexico to go through to the semi-finals. Colombia beat Switzerland 2-0. Falcao and Baca with with goals. Then we had the third place... Uh, no, the semi-finals, sorry. Colombia. This was only a 1-0 win. Colombia go through an extra time thanks to Davinson Sanchez. But look, Farfan missed a penalty. Peru could have been in the World Cup final if it wasn't for that penalty miss. Really, really unlucky for Peru. Their striker also had a dreadful game, as you can see. The 5.3 must have missed a few clear-cut chances. So Peru, really unlucky not to be in that World Cup final. And Argentina only scraped through against Belgium on penalties. Munia scored in the 44th minute. Higuain scored in the 45th minute. And then, of course, it went to penalties. Third place playoff then. Belgium did beat Peru 2-1. Leon Bailey with the winning goal. He did feature quite a lot in these simulations. Not all the time, but yeah, he did feature quite a lot for the Belgian team. I kind of feel like they're going to play a 3-5-2 at the World Cup. Well, three at the back with wing-backs at the World Cup. That's what they seem to be favouring at the moment. Company, Olderveld and Vertonghen at the back. I guess it depends if Company is fit. If they can play Company, Olderveld and Vertonghen at the back at the World Cup, they've got a really good chance. Munia on the right wing back, Carrasco left wing back. More, he's preferred to play in the wing, but he can easily play wing back. They've got an incredible base there. Then what I would do personally is play Nyan Golan and De, Bru- De Bruyne in the middle with Hazard, Mertens and Lukaku as like a trio up front, just switching around. That's what I would do. I haven't picked too many players there, have I? <laughs> Possibly. But yeah, I don't know if uh, Martinez is going to do that. I suspect he'll play Witzel because Witzel just seems to play for Belgium all the time. I don't really know why. I don't... He's just... He's he's caught of, kind of good at everything but not exceptional at anything, I guess. But I would just... I mean, you can't leave... Nyan Golan is such a brilliant player and him and De Bruyne alongside each other. They're going to rip teams apart, surely. Anyway, I digress. The final then. We're going to watch this final. We're going to watch the key highlights anyway. Let's watch this final then. We're watching key highlights. So, I mean, most of the key highlights will be goals, to be honest, in this one, because it did finish 6-4. And there was only 20 shots in the game. Five clear-cut chances for Argentina, two for Colombia, four half chances for Colombia, 50-50 possession, pretty equal stuff. But, obviously, Argentina came out on top. If this happens in real life, if there's a 6-4 World Cup final, the world would implode, I think. Apparently, there's a 2 out of 100 chance of it finishing 6-4 because we saw two 6-4 finals. That was the first goal of the game then. Simple finish from back, a one-on-one with the goalkeeper. Messi got the equaliser. Now, he didn't score many goals, did he, um, in this experiment? But it, it was a penalty, to be fair. So, kind of a goal gifted to him. And Messi's missed penalties recently, hasn't he? He's not been the most prolific at penalties in recent times. It's not really his forte. But playing in central midfield, I do feel like, he's, although they've got so much attacking talent, you have to play Messi in his best position, don't you? Don't play, don't you know, control him in central midfield. It's just inhibiting him too much. But anyway, he managed to get the equaliser in this game. Fired it. Ospina got a hand to it, but it was too powerful for him. And they actually went two one up straight away from kickoff because of the most bizarre own goal you will ever see on Football Manager. Uh, if it happened in real life, there would be riots. I mean, there should be riots because it's happening on the game, to be honest. It's really, really bad. Have a look at this. And I don't mean a bad own goal is in the defender lobbed his own goalkeeper. I mean, it really shouldn't happen. <laughs> it's ridiculous, but quite funny at the same time. Anyway, we'll uh, get to it eventually. A couple mistakes from Colombia there. Gifted possession to Di Maria, who ran down the left-hand side put pretty harmless cross into the box. Ospina collects it and and walks it into his own goal. But it looks like he walked through the side of the goal because the ball ended up the wrong side of the side netting. And somehow that counted as a goal. I mean, is this VAR going wrong? It must be. I think VAR has been installed in the game and it's basically gone wrong there, as always, and let 
Argentina have a goal. They did equal. Colombia did equalise not long after, though, making it 2-2 through Falcao before half time. Um, but then Argentina actually went 3-2 up before the half time whistle. It's Roberto Pereira with the goal. So many different goal scorers in this final. It's just crazy. I'd, I'd love this to happen. But just think, just think of the pundits. They wouldn't be saying, oh, this is a marvellous spectacle. They'd just be going on about the bad defending, wouldn't they? I, I just find it really funny, though, that at the World Cup final, they've still got picnic benches in the corner. That is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Some Russian picnic ben benches in the corner of the stadium. It's just hilarious. <laughs> anyway, let's have a look at the second half. So Argentina currently 3-2 up at this point. I've actually forgotten. I think it's 3-2. Yeah, it is 3-2. And then Colombia managed to make it 3-3, did they? Let's have a quick look. Look ahead. Carlos Bacca, yes, they did make it 3-3. Like I said, in the comment section below, if you can stick... The number of the simulation that you would most like to see, or a few that you would like to see me do a separate video on. After this final, we'll also have a look at... We'll look at the best goal of the tournament, a few statistics as well. Lovely finish from back. Quadrado playing it right back, really performing very, very well. It almost gives him more chance to overlap and get those crosses in, which really suits his uh, skill set, I guess. Where are we up to now, then? So there's a random highlight here with no goal. There are actually there actually are highlights without any goals apparently. Um, Otto Mendy getting booked is a highlight. I don't think we really need to see that one, do we? Look at that! What a really good chance there to put Argentina four three up, but it didn't happen. We're just going to skip through it through to the four three goal, I think, which was scored by Falcao. So it was actually Colombia going four three up on the sixty third minute. Backer with the cross, Falcao with the goal. But Argentina equalised in the 67th minute through Higuain. So quite feasibly, Colombia could have won this. It really was a topsy-turvy game, end-to-end -end stuff, a brilliant game for the neutrals. It probably would have been the most watched World Cup final on TV easily. It probably will be anyway, even if it's 0-0. But yeah, this was the equaliser. Higuain on the volley to make it 4-4. And then Higuain actually went off injured. I want to skip ahead. I want to go to the next highlight. It's not letting me go to the next highlight. Ah, oh, here we go. So Higuain went off injured. It's 4-4 at this stage with 10 minutes to go. Just imagine the scenes when they managed to get the fifth. Oh, wait, we've skipped the fifth. <laughs> it's not 10 minutes to go. It's 13 minutes to go. Ignore what I just said. 13 minutes to go. I can't click on this. There we go. <laughs> this is professional, isn't it? This was the fifth goal. Aguero all alone. Where was the defendant? Aguero actually came off the bench, didn't he? Did he start it? He might have done. I can't actually remember. And then to round it off in the 89th minute, Colombia obviously pushing forward at this point. Let's just watch from this point onwards. Colombia desperately trying to get an equaliser to make it 5-5. I mean, I'd have loved to see a 5-5 and it goes to extra time. That would be phenomenal. But... Argentina killed it off. Dybala with the sixth goal on the volley from an Aguero cross to win the World Cup. Absolutely ridiculous. It, this game had everything apart from a red card. It had a penalty, it had an injury, it had a bizarre own goal. It had two goals from Falcao. We had five different goal scorers for Argentina plus an own goal. Aguero got an assist. Oh, he did start the game. He got a hat trick of assists as well. Absolutely brilliant. And as I said, Falco won the best player award. Golden Boot was won by Falco as well, ahead of Baca and Higain. I mean, six goals at a World Cup generally gets you the Golden Boot, as you can see here. But we had a lot of simulations where players got more than... I don't know what the, the most common was. It's probably eight was the most common. But of course, we saw Aguero score 14 in one of them. We could possibly see that. Best goalkeeper was won by Raul Fernandez for Peru. That's really nice to see. Some... So a keeper that's not really expected to win the best goalkeeper of the tournament. I mean, Colombia and Argentina goalkeepers don't deserve it because they conceded so many goals, of course. Uh, best young player was won by Denis Zakaria, Swiss. So if if you want a cheeky bet, maybe maybe put best young player of... Is that even a thing? Maybe that's not an official award. This was the dream team. Classic 4-4-2. So the Peru goalkeeper. We had Munia... And Shenikov as the wing backs with Ramos and Sanchez at centre back. 
So there was a Colombia centre-back despite all the goals they conceded. Cuadrado on the right-hand side of midfield, even though he was playing uh, full-back. De Bruyne, Pereira, De Maria, and the two Colombian strikers up front. And then the goal of the tournament, scored by Christian Eric. I think this is the one that I showed, actually. This possibly might be the only one that I showed in the actual 100 simulations. Let's have a look. But we'll have, if, when we do look at more simulations, we will have a, a look at um, goal of the tournament. Yeah, this is the one that I've already shown. But it was a really good goal, to be fair. So that was the 77th simulation of my experiment. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like if you did. I'll get around to making some more individual videos on the on the simulations as well very soon. So I hope you're looking forward to those as well. Until next time, enjoy FM18. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you very soon.